Hey everybody, this is Way to Fail here with some Kerbal Space Program Hard Mode, where today we're doing an interesting mission. We are on a rescue mission to rescue a Kerbal stranded in orbit or orbit around the planet of Kerbin. But because this is hard mode, we don't necessarily have everything afforded to us that someone else might for this mission. You can see we have an upgrade on the ship here as we see our poor Kerbal in orbit. We'll talk about what this means in just a little bit. I do have an upgraded launch pad so I can have a slightly heavier vehicle. I still do not have an upgraded parts facility. So we're going to be doing this with 30 parts or less. And most importantly, and part of the reason I'm making this video, is because we're doing it without patched connects. We're doing this without maneuver nodes. Yes, you can actually get things in orbit without maneuver nodes. In fact, Kerbal Space Program originally didn't have maneuver nodes at all. So we're going to be doing a few fun missions without them, starting with a rescue mission because it's something that you can get early and you can get pretty good payment for and an extra crew member. All of those very useful in hard mode. Now to do that, I've made some diagrams here to try and sort of discuss basics surrounding orbital mechanics and how the hell you're even supposed to see or get a Kerbal without maneuver nodes. So let's go over the basics real quick. Some of you are going to know this offhand, some of you will not, or maybe haven't thought about it because Kerbal Space Program. But the idea of going in orbit is that the force of gravity is not enough to overcome your lateral velocity going around a body, so thus you go around it in a circle. And as you can see from the diagram here, if you're in a lower altitude, then you are traveling faster in your orbit around there. But if you're in a higher altitude, you're traveling a slower velocity. So we're going to use this method or use this rule kind of to try and match altitude and velocity with the object that we're looking for. In this case, to try and match altitude and velocity so that we can actually reach a Kerbal stranded in space. But if you want to reach an object in orbit, you have to keep in mind that if you just match altitude and match velocity, match orbits, you're never going to reach them. And what the maneuver node system tends to do, if you're familiar with it, will actually put markers that say if you're getting closer or further away. We don't need that. What you can do instead is just try and set your orbit, say that the red object is you, the spaceship, or is going to be us, the black object is, the, is in orbit here. If we want to catch up to the object, what we're going to do is have part of our orbit match with the other side, or you don't have to totally match it, you can kind of BS it a little bit. And then part of the orbit kind of going up and out, or up and out if we want to slow down and have the object catch up to us, or in this diagram have the orbit lower so that we end up traveling around the blue thing here, the planet, faster than the other object, where eventually we do that and after a few passes, the black object will be targetable from the red object. Now if you're familiar with Kerbal Space Program's career mode, you cannot target straight from map mode. But if you are close enough to an object where you can see it and right click it, as you'll see in this video, you can manually target. So what we want to do here is have enough orbits going around the planet where eventually the object catches up to us where we can then get close enough and try and get into target mode. Target mode is totally different than a uh, basic orbit mode. It changes your uh, speedometer, <laughs> not your nav ball. Excuse me. And what you want to do is to t set your target velocity to zero when you're closer. And we'll demonstrate this in the video. But when the object is close enough, you want to burn on the pink icon that's shown here in the picture. And like I said, we'll be demonstrating this in the video. And slowly but surely, because we're early on enough in our research tree that we don't have RCS thrusters, so we'll be using an LV909 engine for this. And as we drift closer to the object, or if the object starts drifting off, we just go back and forth with our orbital velocity and make that happen until eventually you get close enough to use the bracket keys, which is a very important hotkey to know to switch between the object, and then we move forward. So let's go ahead and go back to the launch of this ship here. So had a little bit of a pause menu there because I actually had uh, kiddos wanting to interrupt me in the middle of this, but as you can see from this ship, we actually have two uh, command modules here, which makes the launch a little bit tougher because you gotta have some extra oomph now what I try and do here, and I don't do it very successfully, is to plan my launch so that it's a daytime launch, and then you can see the poor orbiting Kerbal on the left. It's gonna, it's going a lot faster than us. In fact, it's going probably about a whole click or a thousand meters per second faster, approximately, right now. So it is going to pass by us or get pretty close, but we can't target it yet. You've got to be a lot closer to actually target. We can see the moon. This is actually not a terrible trajectory for trying to get into a moon or orbit, although it'd be a pretty crappy orbit. But anyway, you can see my apoapsis is going up a little bit higher than the about a thousand or a hundred thousand meters 
of our destination object and that's okay you're gonna see I'm not gonna be super precise here especially with this launch vehicle my bigger thing is just that I want to get this slightly heavier object up into space and you may have seen that I had a uh, the science junior lab up there as well because you can almost always get contracts to do science here but let's speed up here we have an orbit and you can see our first kind of philosophy here is that I want the other object to catch up to me so my apoapsis is further out and this is definitely time accelerated by quite a bit but we have our orbit mode and because we were even I'm just doing my science here because it's prudent to do that and you don't actually have to fully collect science to get your science contract done we'll talk about that later but as we go around and around you can see every time we have an orbit our poor little stranded curve rule is getting closer and closer and closer and closer and you're allowed to adjust the uh, everything as close as possible so I can adjust my orbit to make this not necessarily as extreme of a pass here because it looks like I'm gonna be pretty close and of course as usual it's gonna be a dark side here so apologize for the video quality on this but pretty close and you can see I'm just trying to change my target here now when you switch to target mode by actually clicking and getting the thing here you'll see that all the markers on the nav ball change and what I'm really trying to do is to burn retrograde and then hitting that pink marker right there you'll see the prograde vector moves over to it that's something someone wanted me to emphasize in the video here is that those change you're burning retrograde to the object so right now we're traveling 22.6 meters per second towards the object as we see a beautiful sunrise here and once again I want to be going slower you don't want to hit the uh, opposite marker that's our, the opposite pink marker that's better for uh, say targeting or trying to do docking maneuvers we're not concerned with that here we just want to make sure because the object is starting to pass under us that we match orbits so turning it back down lowering the target velocity here you're, it's gonna be very fuzzy with the uh, LV909 engine here because honestly turning the craft will if you try and get like 0 0.2 0 0.3 turning the craft will actually make that change so we don't really want to worry about that but once again once we get low enough just change the target velocity. You can see our orbits are pretty well matched. You don't want to overcorrect to the point where you drop out of orbit. That means you're not actually in target mode. But once again, you can see the prograde vector going forward, doing actually kind of aggressive burn for being uh, three uh, or three thousand meters within Richley Kerman. But we are getting closer at hand, and sure enough, you can see eight or. 1.6, 1.5, 1.4. We're just about close enough. Actually, we probably could already switch here, but time accelerating, very nice, very important. And we still do have plenty of fuel. So I have successfully done some science here. Once again, we don't want to go on that back pink marker. You want to burn retrograde, and it is going to move, and you're going to have to chase down this icon more than likely as you're slowing down. So I have SAS on, but you see that I turned it off there because it will just stick on that marker. So 0.4 is kind of close enough. When you switch objects, it stops your lateral velocity. You kind of, it's kind of a way to cheese staying in one spot. But there we go. Use the bracket and switch to poor Richley Kerman, who is just floating there. Now it's pretty important to actually uh, know your hotkeys for RCS maneuvering because if you don't have mods and this is not no mods installed here. You're just going to have to know how to fly forward and backward. You have no other markers or nodes other than, oh boy, am I getting closer to the ship? And I'm just going to do the time acceleration thing here. Time acceleration thing again, just to get a little bit closer because I try and take this very carefully. It is possible to go a little too fast and miss the object. It is possible to ram the object and possibly break the rescue ship, but how Kerbal is it to go from one rescue mission to another rescue mission to another rescue mission? I've had that happen. I'm sure you all have had that happen too. We'll probably have that happen on the moon even, which is exciting. But here's Richley Kerman, a floating night. When you think about it, it's nice. Are you scared of heights? Are you so scared of heights? Because uh, I actually don't do great with heights. I have a lot of vertigo issues, but I still remember going to uh, Pikes Peak to do a downhill bike ride. And uh, yeah, not uphill. I'm not in that good shape. And eventually, it was really interesting because eventually I got so high up that the... It, the height didn't register with me anymore and I imagine 95,000 meters in the sky is kind of say things like oh there's a planet below me but it doesn't really register just how high up I am but regardless here's rescue possible now if this were a docking thing you can t target like docking ports and everything but you just got to keep in mind the uh, shape of your ship and the size here because we're actually gonna have to get to the door and from the looks of it I'm not actually super close to the door 
and I think there's going to be a pretty nice derp coming up here in a second. Look out for that. But overall, richly, if you press L, by the way, it does turn on the lights on your Kerbal. So that is very useful, especially if we were on the dark side and couldn't see as well. But fortunately, this is a daytime, amazing daytime uh, rescue mission. And here we go, switching back to the other ship. And I get so excited, I accidentally hit the uh, Space Center button. So derp. Well, if anything, you can go to the tracking station, go back there pretty quickly. It's a little annoying because I was ready. I was ready to get things, get things together and just get the guy in. But fortunately, he's still floating. He's not drifting off. We're still there. All I wanted to do was rotate the ship. I'm not even sure why my mouse went up there, but just one quick little turn. You can see that my, I don't even need to have my SAS on too much because we're not doing a very precise docking here. All we want to do is just to float him very gently up to the door. You see, I don't even have the thing selected. Why Why do I keep drifting my mouse up there? Am I just trying to troll myself? I don't know. Maybe I could have checked for some science contracts or something. I don't know. But as soon as you get richly on board, there's Jebediah Kerman and the other one here. You should have an option to grab at any moment. Any moment. Just taking this very carefully. And da, 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 any day now. Now, I could actually try and make the ship a little more vertical or horizontal, but that shouldn't be necessary. There's the grab. Light's not doing too well there, but as soon as I board, you'll see we get some contract notifications up top. Richley Kerman is now part of our crew. Even if we don't successfully rescue him, he's still part of our crew. So I guess that's by attrition, maybe. But we still have good fuel. Uh, we can recover scientific data from space and I do just want to reemphasize here is that it can even be data worth zero and you can see my numbers may look low that's because I'm on hard mode so we're just gonna I think this is actually transmit data because I do have the communicatron and even if you transmit zero value data that should still satisfy the contract here we're just going through our battery charge because I don't have solar panels yet but there we go Extra science from space. Try and get that in when you can, even if it's science that you've already done. Yay. But now we're just going to go to the landing sequence, which I know for some of y'all this is uh, the most exciting part of Kerbal Space Program. For others of you, it's like, oh my god, this is the part where I can't time accelerate very well. But I'm still trying to do the thing where I land fairly close to the Kerbal Space Center. Unfortunately, what that means is that I am going to be landing at night. So there's not a lot to see other than, ooh, look at the sky. I really need to upgrade the skybox and put the cloud mods back in and all that. It's been a while since I've done that. My system can handle it very well, It's even while we're corning. It's just that uh, I when I got the beta patch, I just uninstalled all my mods because I'm a dumbass. But there we go, burning up into the atmosphere. Got your drogue shoots, got your other shoots, and it's all very dark. And I'm already time accelerating quite a bit just on top of that, but... Overall, a successful rescue mission. Landing should be the easy part. I don't even know if the materials bay is going to survive or not. But we're slow enough. Looks like it did. So there we go. Rescue complete without maneuver nodes. Once again, what's the rule of the day? If you want an object to catch up to you, you put yourself in a higher orbit. That makes it go around faster than you. If you want to catch up with the object, you put yourself in a lower orbit and you will speed up eventually. What you don't want to do is just put yourself in the same orbit as what you're tracking down here because then you'll just never meet because obviously we want to meet here but otherwise here's me going through just a little bit of a extra science and things. You always want to prioritize experiments when you can but solar panels are so important that I should be going for them first except I don't quite have the science for it yet. But still that's pretty much it for this video. This is Way to Fail with more Kerbal Space Program. Next time, we're going to talk about going to the moon without maneuver nodes, which is fun and exciting and interesting and really takes you back to old school Kerbal Space Program. But that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed it. And there we go. Rescuing Richly is done. Without nodes, it is possible. Got any questions? Feel free to leave them in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching. See you next time.